now the morning of the 19th and we're pretty much done um, very compact um, pleased with that it fits well in here um, we've got the uh, cell log 8 connected up that's what all this white spaghetti is uh, connects to each cell um, was quite easy to do um, they're not soldered in or anything um, because the uh, links are laminated in layers um, I could just stick the um, narrow gauge copper wire between the laminates and then bolt down on it and uh, I didn't need to sort out lugs or anything um, the uh, connections uh, to the terminals, the end terminals are just soldered onto the lugs um, it shares um, that power line with uh, another line that uh, goes off to um, the old smart gauge. Um, I don't know if it will work at all um, in its um, state of charge percent display mode, um, but it does have a um, voltage display mode, so it can show the pack voltage in a very clear way that I can see um, without having to run around the back and squint at the uh, very tiny um, cell log display. Um, you can see on the cell log display here that uh, it's showing its bar graph of all the cells, all eight cells. Um, it shows which one's the highest, which one's the lowest and the difference. Um, and incredibly only six or seven millivolts difference between all the cells. A very good balancing. And that only increased to about 15 millivolts uh, when I ran the uh, electric kettle um, off the battery pack, uh, drawing 35 amps um, and uh, measured only um, 0.22 volts drop across the pack doing that um, so I estimate the uh, pack voltage, including all the connections um, is uh, about 6 to 7 uh, milliohms, incredibly low um, reprogrammed the um, chargers last night um, so I am using uh, temperature compensation the, the sensors are still plugged in uh, over there um, not measuring the battery pack temperature at the moment um, as I say I might use that sensor input for something else um, I have um, set the range on the temperature compensation to do uh, to be from 25 degrees C and the, the nominal temperature for compensation uh, adjustment is around 25 degrees C so lower than 25 degrees C it makes no adjustment it doesn't increase the voltage which is important um, but above 25 degrees C um, it would start to reduce the charging voltage um, and if I put the sensors on the battery um, it could detect a fault condition where the battery is heating up although I doubt it ever will um, the charge currents aren't high enough the discharge currents um, don't uh, don't matter for charging um, compensation um, so uh, might use um, that input for something or eventually give up and, and disconnect it and disable temperature compensation altogether um, I've set the um, nominal charging voltage um, maximum to uh, 3.5 volts per cell. It's quite low, but quite safe. Um, and it will only um, sit at its absorption voltage of 3.5 volts per cell for 10 minutes um, before dropping down to the float voltage um, set at 3.35 volts per cell um, I'll have to monitor um, data from the cell log um, to make sure that all the cells are staying in balance um, as you see the display has gone off now um, I set one of the power saving modes which uh, allows the backlight to turn off saving uh, power from the battery pack um, but it does still um, show the display um, the LCD doesn't turn off, only the backlight. So, under some lighting conditions, um, you can you can still s read the display um, even without the backlight. 
Well, now um, really begins a, a phase of testing and uh, I need to get this um, alarm output from the cell log um, interfaced to the inverter um, as a low voltage disconnect. Um, but of course uh, the saga of uh, the problems with this alarm output not working properly continue. As luck would happen, it's turned really sunny this morning. Um, really charging very quickly, doing almost uh, 60 amps on this gauge here um, into the battery. Um, this one's doing uh, 48 amps by itself, and the, the 15 amp charger's doing 6. We're up to uh, 27.8 or thereabouts on the pack voltage. Um, the cell log is showing uh, good balance even at this charge rate. Um, only 27 millivolts difference between the highest cell and the lowest cell. Um, getting quite near the 28 volt limit where the charger should go into its constant voltage mode. So we should see uh, the charger start to wind down in a few minutes um, and then drop down to its float level after 10 minutes. Right, we've reached the uh, end stage of the programmed charging. Um, the small charger has um, already done its absorption 10 minutes and the slow blinking light shows it's gone into its float mode. It's showing zero charge current. Um, the big charger is still doing 40 amps or thereabouts, um, but it's um, it's in its absorption phase. Um, it's been going a few minutes and should drop out into um, its float mode. Um, meanwhile, the cell log is showing um, still pretty good uh, balance. Um, it's reading pack voltage of 27.86, so not quite to 28. Um, it's showing the number one cell um, as um, 3.51 volts, um, and the lowest cell, number eight, as 3.46, which is still catching up. Um, I'm getting a difference alarm now. I set the difference alarm between the highest and the lowest cell to 50 millivolts and it's just pushing that now. Um, that uh, number one cell is um, getting high um, compared to the others. So the uh, pack differential alarm has just um, briefly blipped. And we'll keep an eye on that until the uh, um, thing stops. Um, This is still in its absorption. I can hear the inverter running, so probably the water heater's kicked in upstairs. It's very sunny today. Okay, um, the big charge is now flashing slowly. Um, it's gone into its float, uh, so has the little one. Um, both chargers are now reading zero amps. Um, and in fact the battery is now discharging at 30 amps because the uh, water heater has come on upstairs. Um, so I might need to adjust the way the uh, load manager for the water heater works. But basically now the, uh, the back uh, bank has got full, um, the chargers have stopped um, and the pack is drifting down towards its float voltage. Um, on discharge upstairs. Now it's been uh, over an hour since the uh, chargers both went into their float mode um, and both are still reading um, no current, zero there, zero there, um, nothing going in or out of the battery, um, but the voltage has settled somewhat um, from its high of 28 volts. Um, in terms of balance, um, seems to have uh, widened a little bit the gap between the lowest and highest cell 
from a, um, a minimum that I saw of about 6 millivolts and now about 31. Um, we'll see what happens when I stick a load on it. We're going to make some tea and uh, see what happens after applying a 1 kilowatt load for 4 minutes or so. You can see now that uh, applying a 1 kilowatt load to the pack has uh, scrubbed off all of the uh, uh, surface charge or whatever it is that um, keeps the, the pack high when there's no load on it after charging and it's uh, down to its float voltage of 26.8 volts and the, uh, the charger's uh, kicked in, it's doing about 20 amps um, the battery is doing about 13 amps uh, to make up the uh, total load to the inverter. Balance on the pack is actually uh, improving somewhat um, as the cells hunker down. Um, it's now about 27 millivolts difference um, and dropping. Um, Interesting.